and welcome to the Community Eye Health Journal webcast. Today I'm joined by Elmine Bulfart Ellison, editor of the Community Eye Health Journal. Hello. And Dr. Fatima Chiari, a clinical ophthalmologist and research fellow. Hello. Thank you very much for joining me. Firstly, Elmine, if I can start with you. The Community Eye Health Journal is published in English um, and in French as well. Mm -hmm. Just tell us, um, who is the journal intended for? Well, it's for all IK workers, really, um, from absolutely at the primary level, people dealing with everyday eye conditions, uh, through secondary doctors, ophthalmologists, to teaching hospitals. Um, we know that from our readership survey that the journals used to teach others a lot. And also, um, it's, it's a, used at primary level to just refresh people's training so that they feel confident that what they're doing is the right thing. As somebody actually wrote us that you remind me that I'm doing the right and acceptable thing. Right. Mm. And and Fatima, um, you're based in Nigeria, yes, correct? Yes, I am. And how do you find, uh, is, is, do you see the journal being read by many of your colleagues, or how does it influence their practice? Well, yes, um, it's been read a lot by my colleagues and even people I work with, the nurses, you know, other eye health workers. Sometimes my copies get lost <laughs> because they borrow them, and then um, they say, okay, I'll return it to you tomorrow, yes. and I say, no, you can have it because I can always have another one. Very good. Or because there's an online version of it which I can get onto it, mm -hmm. this is now. But then, before they started the online version, um, we could, and that was during my training days, we could um, subscribe and then get it for free, and it does get to us. So great. I just we just try to get as many people as possible on the database. Mm. Mm. Yes. Yeah, so absolutely. It's, it, it's really quite useful. Um, if I can draw from my experience, yes. <laughs> when I was training, maybe second year residency, first year, second year residency. Um, there was this issue that had trachoma, trachiasis surgery in it, and um, I actually used it as, as my surgical tutor. Right. <laughs> you know, I read it the night before I had the TT surgery to do um, um, the bilamellar tarsal rotation, and I used it for my surgery, and it was very successful, and that was how I started, Great. you know, sharing my experiences with others using the journal as a mm. trainer, not just mm. as for information, but also for training. Mm. So, I mean, you're a, a clinical ophthalmologist, but Elmine, I mean, what does the journal contain? Is it only for ophthalmologists, or no, can any, it's, it's does anyone who re reads it get instruction from it? Yeah, absolutely. We've, um, In fact, I've been looking at who reads it at the primary healthcare level, and um, in that group, a quarter of the readers are nurses, doctors, and community health workers who want to learn more about eye care and who feel the need. They see in their community there's a lot of people with eye problems, mm. and they want to refresh their knowledge and, and, and learn a bit more because very often IK is not included in their, their normal training so they're really keen to, to learn as much as possible and that's been growing. So, um, And what we've also learned from the readership survey is that um, IK workers at this level use it to teach patients about what's going on with their eyes because there's lots of images and, right. and pictures and diagrams so they can see what's going on and they use it to educate the patient's families because they might need extra care and it's also gone to teachers um, because school eye screening is still a, a big issue there's a lot of uncorrected refractive error, and the mm. more, but the more widely people know about these very basic and, and helpful um, eye care issues, the quicker they can take action, and the more easily we can prevent blindness. And Fatima, you mentioned your colleagues uh, sometimes uh, maybe steal the journal from you. Uh, what about medical students uh, as well? Do they sort of gain information from that? Because ophthalmology is a tough subject to learn. Um, well, I can't really say much about that because my interaction with medical students is very minimal. Um, but with train, trainees, postgraduate trainees, yes, they, they get it, they like the journal, and um, most of them actually subscribe to it, so they get Great. it, yeah. And in terms of receiving the journal, I mean, Elmine, we live in a digital world now. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm looking at my iPad right now. <laughs> but um, just tell me, is there a need to, to have a print version? I mean, because you, yeah. know, you can download iPad apps or read things on the internet, as Fatima yes. alluded to. So yes. why, are we, why do we still have the print version? Well, um, if you're in the UK, you don't need a print version. And, and we'd be much happier if you downloaded it rather than um, asking for a paper copy. Okay. But in Africa particularly, which is, which is really where the biggest need is for IK information, into access is completely terrible in many countries. In capital cities, you know, you'll, you'll have some decent internet access, but even there, yeah. it can be intermittent, it can be very expensive as well, and to download something, I think the journal is about 10 uh, megabytes, you know, if you want to download right. it, and it's really slow. It, people have to wait a long time. Mm. So so we know from the evidence is that it's really difficult, but we were very encouraged to see that 98% of our journal readers have mobile phones, 
and about, I think, 20% might have, um, we're not 100% sure, but I think 20% have um, phones with internet capability. Right. So we're starting to sort of move our content in a more digital friendly format so that those who do have that access can have it so that we can serve the entire range of IK workers in, in working in different settings. And so for people, uh, for people who do have internet access, which website should they be logging on to? Um, it's www.cehjournal.org. Fantastic. Thank you both very much for joining me and uh, we look forward to another ICEH and Community iHealth Journal webcast. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.